I was willing to put in the extra work. Sure enough, it hits my back. Of course, they do it the right way. They don't take shortcuts, they don't make excuses. The glamorous part of the game, uh, Sammy, as you know, is winning championships. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Hey Bucket Live. I'm your host, Sammy Glantz. This week, we have on a very special guest. We have Coach Jamie Juarez Strazer. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today, Jamie. Thank you for having me. Well, let's just get right started with this. Um, so you're quite busy. You have your own side lessons. You're a head coach at for the Batbusters, and you're at Northview High School. How are you able to balance this busy schedule? <laughs> I don't know. I think sometimes I put too much on my plate, but um, I've always been accustomed to working hard, so I like to challenge myself every day, I guess. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Definitely staying busy. So right now at, at, at Northview, you were just telling me that um, you guys are back in the swing of things. You guys are training nonstop. You guys have got 6 a.m.s going. What's going on with your team over there, and how are we looking gearing up for a, a, another season? Oh man, uh, they're a great group of girls. Um, no complaints about 6 a.m.s, which is awesome from the parents or the kids. I think it helps out the parents because of that late start that they have. Um, we got four really good incoming freshmen this year. Um, I, I, I believe they really have a chance to finish at the top in league, possibly win league. And you started back in 2019 with Northview. Um, one of the biggest goals that you said in one of your models is, if you build it, they will come. How do you feel like it's been over these past four years? And do you feel like everyone's kind of adapting to your message and your coaching style? Um, yeah, yes, absolutely. Um, I don't know if we've gotten transfers, but I feel like we've gotten better players coming in to the program, which always helps. Um, a lot of positive feedback from parents and some of the teaching staff, the administration, which is really awesome as well. That's awesome. And then with with the Batbusters now too, you're working with a, a different age group. You're now at the 12U. Um, how's how's that going? And how do you feel like the, the differences between working with the little ones at the 12U versus working with the high schoolers? Um, the little ones, we can still mold them. I mean, I love it. I've had this group, a good core eight of them since 10U. Um, you can teach them, you can mold them. The hard part is they're becoming teenagers. So they'll all be turning 13 next year. So that's the balance right there. Um, and they're just trying to figure out how to get the younger ones to have that competitive drive, that extra like oomph, like running through a fence for you. Like that's, you, I mean, that's so hard to teach, but it, kids are built different these days, you know? Um, as far as the high school, just being more of a, a life situation for them. So getting them to understand like softball is gonna teach you about life, not just the game, like missing assignments. Are you gonna miss an assignment for work? Probably not, you're gonna get reprimanded for it. So trying to feed them into that lifestyle, understanding that this is all about real life when you guys are done. Yeah, exactly. It's it's always just taking the taking the messages from the game and then applying it to your to your real life, and that's 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 the best part of the game. Um, so you you've been coaching for over ten years now, and you've had an experience of working with hundreds of girls. How how would you say that the your coaching style and everything has kind of shifted? You kind of briefly mentioned how how kids are kind of built different now. What's something that you've changed about your coaching style to adapt to that? Um, I try to love them a little bit harder and not be so hard on them, but understand that I have that high expectation for them. Um, maybe yelling at them, you know, but then pulling them aside and like, hey, I know you, you could do better. You could be better. Um, got to put in some extra work, you know, just making sure that, you know, the same, like coach them hard, but love them harder. Just making sure that they know that it's a safe place and like you just want the best for them. Especially now with the with the recruiting process the way it is, and we, we were just kind of speaking on transfer portals and how you know if you're unhappy you can kind of just bounce around. What what would you say is your biggest piece of advice for recruits who are going through the process now? Find a school that is that suits you academically because softball you're not going to do it for the rest of your life. It's like less than one percent get lucky to do it. Um, make sure they have everything that you're looking for. Your coach is going to stay there for the four years and not try, um, take another job on you. Um, and just try to keep a positive mindset. 
Yeah, exactly. I mean, you just, I think the the biggest piece of advice that I got when I was going through the recruiting process was if your career ended today, would you still be happy at that school? And I, I, yes. I truly feel like that was some of the best advice I could have ever gotten, um, was just making sure that you, you, you're happy where you are, you love that school, and that's, that's where you'd be happy going. So you had an incredible college career. Um, you were a four-time Big Ten selection at Ohio State. Um, and then obviously now with the, the, the program, seeing it develop in, in the way that it is and um, making regionals and all that, do you, do you still have a lot of ties going back to Ohio State and obviously still a proud Buckeye alum? Definitely a proud Buckeye alum. Um, I don't have ties anymore because uh, the coach, Linda Califatis, isn't there anymore, and that was my coach. Um, still follow them and still super pumped for what they've done. It's been a while since we went, since 2007 was our last Big Ten title when I was there, so I'm hoping they can pull one off um, moving forward. Two two moms on my travel ball team that I coach for Vapposters actually played at Ohio State as well. No way. Oh yeah, gosh. before me, but it's super cool. Oh, that's so cool. Everyone's, everyone's coming back to Southern California. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Well, and now with the Bat Busters, it's super cool because you have the opportunity to coach and you also had the opportunity to play for Mike Stiff back in the, in the day. So it's super cool to kind of see that go full circle. Um, what's, what's your relationship like with Mike and, and how, how has it developed over the years? Oh, man. When I played for him, I was scared of him. Um, even when I started to do lessons out of the facility, um, you know, I was still nervous to talk to him because I still saw him as, you know, Coach Mike. But over these last couple of years, I've been able to ask him meant more of a mentorship, like, what do I do in this situation? Or how, how would I move along with this? Like, and he's been amazing about it and always supportive. Like, whatever I believe in, he'll, he'll back me. That's so awesome. And I mean, Mike has obviously had his, had his hands on some of the most elite softball players over the past, you know, uh, 20 yes. years, which is just incredible to see. Um, what what do you think makes Mike's method so good and so effective? Uh, he's constantly um, evolving himself, like learning and being like, like Rap Soto. He just learned about like Rap Soto and he really wants to get involved in that. Um, he's in it for the right reasons. Like it's about the girls and about the kids and their development. Um, like he told me, Jane, you're probably not going to win a ton of games, but it's okay because it's about developing these guys and getting them ready for the next level. And for them, it would be 14 you. So making sure that they understand everything now so there's more room to grow on the next stuff moving forward. Being a part of the Bat Buster organization is just so special in itself. Such a storied franchise with so much success. What do you feel like is is the most like what makes you so proud to wear that Bat Buster uniform and to be a part of that organization? Um, uh, the facility is amazing. That's like my, when I sell it to people, I'm like, you got to check out this facility. They have cage. You know what I mean? Like, it's just you walk in there and you're like, OK, you're in softball heaven. Like it's dedicated to softball. Um, just knowing that the people that wore the shirt, the, the name before you, you know what I mean? Like Gary Henning was huge in the coaching world. Then you have Andrea Duran in there. Um, you have uh, Jason Krebs, Candace Baker, all those girls that wore the title before you. And it's just like, you're carrying um, history with you. Oh, it's 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 so unbelievable to see, and then now with with, with the success of Maya Brady, and we all, we saw what Amanda Lorenz did, and the yes. Romero sisters, and it just goes on and on. I mean, it's it's so incredible just to run through that alumni list. Yeah. So uh, you 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 just brought something up too uh, with with what you're training for now. You you had the opportunity to be invited back to now train and play for Team Venezuela. That is such an honor. What was that like for you? And can you kind of take us through that moment when they asked you and 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 what, how, were, were you caught off guard or what was your like initial reaction to that? I was definitely caught off guard, that's for sure. Um, I went into like official, official two years retirement um, in 2020 and September 10th, I got a message asking if I wanted to come back to Team Venezuela and I was really shocked and I didn't understand if it was to coach or to play and it was to play. Mind you, I hadn't pitched in two years. I hadn't really picked up a bat to like swing at a pitch. You know, hit ground balls is different. 
Um, so the two months leading up to the Pan American Championships, I worked really hard and was at STC twice a week, um, hitting, building, um, workout program, uh, doing, finding, trying to find a catcher was probably the hardest thing. Um, but one of my high school kids would wake up early for me just so I could throw to her. Um, it was pretty grimy. I told somebody that this is probably the hardest I've ever worked, but not meaning in the sense that I didn't work hard when I did play, but it was different coming back to play. Yeah, like what's what's kind of like a day in the life with, with how you're balancing everything that you're already doing and now add on top about getting back into shape and training. Like how do you, what's, what's like your typical schedule? Um, so the high school does 6 a.m. So 6 to 7, I'm with the high school. Um, and <clears throat> then I'll go to, uh, well, more like 6.30 to 8. So I'll go with the high school. And then around, depending on when uh, Mike's open or free, I'll go to STC, but it's usually in the morning. Um, and then I'll come home for a little bit. And then I'll go to lessons from about 3 to 9 p.m. And then pretty much start all over the next day. That's so crazy. Grind, grind, don't stop. <laughs> no, never. So you, you also have a, a, an incredible clinic that really serves the local community and it's your all around the world softball clinic and it's coming back up on December 30th. Can you kind of just give us a little teaser of what that's going to look like this year? Oh man. Um, well, I started it on a whim in 2019. Uh, my husband was like, why don't you just do a clinic. And I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, just bring in, try to bring in the girls that have played in different countries and show these girls that there's more out there than just playing here in California or just here in, in college in general. So the first one, it was just us on the national team. Uh, I think Gordy Bravo from Mexico, Adriana Perez from Mexico, Amanda Famo from Italy, and then myself from Venezuela. And throughout the years, it's grown a little bit more and a little bit more. Um, I'm always hesitant about doing it because I, I just really want to make sure it's a good ran clinic. Um, last year we had um, Faleal from Mississippi State, Rachel Garcia um, from UCLA and Team, team UCLA, uh, USA, um, Amanda Fama, which both of them are Olympians. They came back from the Olympics. Um, Adriana Perez from Mexico and myself. And then I bring in kids either going to college or coming home from college. So pitcher Lexi Martinez from CSUN, um, outfielder Malaysia Ochoa from Iowa State, uh, third baseman Emily Bracamonte from Central Michigan. So I try to give these girls in the San Diego Valley area something that they can strive for and look forward to. That's that's so special, and you just kind of touched on it. But if you can see it, you can be it, and I I, I truly feel like that's so special that you're you're just doing your part and and giving these girls you know someone someone to look up to and 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 something to strive for. It's really really special. Yeah, thank you. So growing up, did who who was your softball idol? Who did you look up to? Oh, Lisa Fernandez. That was like my. You're like you're like mic drop. That's it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, done, done. No questions asked. She pitched. She hit. She played third base, um, which I was very fortunate to be able to do at Ohio State. Um, so now when it comes into like pitchers only, people ask me, so when do you become a pitcher only? And I'm like, I can't answer that for you because if you work really hard at it, you can do it. It's just a lot of hard work. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, Rachel, Rachel Garcia did it too. And, and she also spoke about Lisa being her, her idol growing up. But what was it about Lisa or like a player like yourself or Rachel, like to be able to do both? like just in general is incredible, but to do it at the, the highest level, like how do you even go about doing that? Man, you spend a lot of time like by yourself. You know, there was days where like, you'd have to go through a bullpen while everybody's hitting, or are you gonna stay after to hit? Or are you just, are you good? That's it, you know? Um, I always remember showing up early to the field in high school and being the last one to leave in high school to make sure I got every single rep that I needed to be successful. Yeah, I mean, like, that's that that's what's going to take in general, playing at the highest level. But the fact that you're, you know, cracking the lineup on, on, on both sides, it's so incredible just to see that, yeah. that grind. Like, it's that's that's insane. That's the actual that's what it takes. Yeah, definitely built different. That's for sure. For sure. Is that is that kind of like maybe some of the inspiration behind your sweatshirt or is that is, is that your merch line? 
or as Bill? Um, yeah, it's just kind of like my husband actually came up with it. Um, he was like, your war is Bill. And I didn't really understand what that meant until he's like, you've had a lot of lot hard, hard losses in life. He goes, but you keep on grinding and you do it with so much passion and you have so much pride for what you do. And you just demand excellence out of everybody that you're around, whether not necessarily softball wise, but just being an excellent human being. So that kind of became like our thing. Like, yeah, I'm going to try and instill that in the kids that, you know, I coach or that we teach together. I love that. That's so special. Um, so, so something that we, we do on Hey Bucket, it's kind of like our little signature, but I'm going to ask you three quick speed round questions and then we'll see what you got. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. First one. What would you say your slogan is or your motto? Uh, passion, pride, excellence. I love that. Short and sweet. <laughs> All right. Second one, a little bit of the easier question. What is your go-to Mexican food order? And what's your go-to spot if you got one? Oh, man. Go-to Mexican food would have to be my grandma's tacos, and I can make them myself. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best. <laughs> or or a shrimp cocktail from Casa Jimenez. Ooh, where's where is that one located? Um, there's one in La Puente. I think there's one like in Hacienda Heights. Um, but it's pretty legit. Ooh, yeah. I don't shrimp is my favorite, so maybe maybe I'll have to go hit that up. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> All right. Um, last question. But since you are an Ohio State Buckeyes fan. Who's going to win the national championship for football this year? Who you got? Oh, man. Not Georgia. <laughs> yeah, not Georgia. <laughs> Anybody but Georgia. <laughs> we got help in the back. <laughs> Definitely not USC either. That was a, that was a huge loss. Yeah, I know. Buckeyes needed that. That was big. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to catch up with us, Jamie. That was so helpful. Um, and I, I know girls that are out there and looking to follow in your footsteps. Uh, it's, it's, it's really helpful for them to be able to hear, hear from you themselves. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me.